<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. We're back over here at the PS3 because I wanted to show you all a cool feature which has just been added pretty recently here to the Evo Nat custom firmware, which I think is not only pretty cool, but I think can help out many of you all, especially if you have been in a situation where you might have accidentally updated your firmware to something that was not a custom firmware and lost your jailbreak, or if you just want to avoid that and maybe make it a little bit easier in the future. You see, earlier this year, Evonat had ended up posting on his Twitter saying, I added all CEX and PEX variants available while using update custom firmware via internet. And in short, this now shows that with the Evonat custom firmware, you can now just update your custom firmware directly on the PlayStation 3. Once you have this updated, as long as this works, you really don't need to go through the process of grabbing a USB drive and transferring your update over in order to update your firmware, so it makes it a little more convenient. Now, if you're at all interested in this feature and want to follow along to add it to your repository on your own system, there's a few things that you'll need to keep in mind for prerequisites. First of all, you must have a jailbroken PlayStation 3 already running custom firmware. This is not for PS3 HIN users. You can see right here that on my XMB, I do not have any references to HIN. I don't have enable HIN. I have this PlayStation 3 folder right here, which is one way of showing that this is running custom firmware. Again, this is only for custom firmware users. This is not for PlayStation 3 HIN. Additionally, you are going to need, ironically enough, a USB drive for this because if you're running a older custom firmware such as I am right here I'm actually a little overdue for an update so if I go to system settings and check out the system information you could see here this system is actually running 4.91 so I need to update to the latest EvoNAT right now in order to get this and then once it's updated in the future you'll be able to just take your updates over the internet here I'll show you how you can do all that and the last thing we'll need is a computer or any other device that allows us to download the necessary custom firmware file and put it on a USB drive. Again, I know this kind of flies in the face of this feature here, but just keep in mind in order to get this feature, you still need to update your firmware the old fashioned way in order to obtain the new firmware. So with that, let's go ahead and move over to our PC. I'm going to show you how to download everything. Now I'll have the important links for this down below in the description, but you're going to need at minimum firmware 4.92.2. So in the future, if there's a 4.93 or 4.92.4, for example, those most firmwares will already have this feature. This is just the first firmware which has this feature available to us. So for this here, you can check this out, and over on the change log here, you could see CFW patched and enabled to update custom firmware via internet on CEX and DEX, depending on the VSH.self. So in order to get this, you can come over to the download section right here. And once you make it over to the download section, as always, you can check out what features are over here because EvoNAT always adds a slew of new features to this firmware. And if you need to get the download, there's a few ways you can get it. He does have the links available right here. There's also a Mediafire folder and a Mega folder. On top of that, there's also a download right here, which at the moment does take you to a Mediafire link. Now, in order to get one of these downloads here, I'm actually going to use the Mediafire folder for example, but you could use any of these, it's really going to do the same thing. If you click on this here, you're going to need to grab the firmware specific for your system. Now, if you have a CEX based system, that means that it is just running a retail custom firmware, you're going to get the CEX variant. Inside of any of these folders, you're going to have your different variants, so a standard one, one for no Bluetooth, if your Bluetooth board is broken or Wi-Fi board is broken, uh, no BD. Again, the same thing if your Blu-ray drive is not paired or it's not working or you don't have a Blu-ray drive. And of course, if both of those are broken, you have the no BD and no BT firmwares. But keep in mind, if you have a standard retail custom firmware, CEX or PEX will work. PEX is going to be the same thing, except it also has developer modules in there, which also allow you to convert it over to a developer or debug type interface. And if you already have one of your systems converted over, you're going to need to get the DPEX variant. For this demonstration here, I'm actually going to be installing the CEX version, but you can install whatever you want to. Again, if you just want a retail experience, CEX is fine. If you have not converted to debug, but you would like those features, PEX will work for you. And if you've already converted 
converted your system to debug, you need DPEX. I'll also have 7-Zip linked down below in the description of this video, just in case you need something that can help you extract the archive file that we're going to download. Now once you have your custom firmware downloaded, grab your archive file, right click, and use something such as 7-Zip to extract it into its own folder. Once you have the folder, go ahead and open it up, and inside of here, you're going to have your README, the MD5 hash, as well as a PS3 folder. And this here has thankfully been built with the folder structure required in mind. So you'll see here in the PS3 folder, there's an update folder, and inside of that, you have ps 3 updatepup In order to copy this over, you can just grab the PS3 folder, right-click, copy it out, Go over to your USB drive, make sure if you haven't already done this, it must be formatted to the FAT32 file system, and also must be MBR. If you've come this far with the PS3, you should know how to set up your USB drive on here. But once that's sorted out, you can go into your USB drive, right-click, and paste the PS3 folder into the root of that USB drive. So now on the drive itself, this is how it should look. You should have your PS3 folder, update folder, ps 3 updatepup It needs to be spelled exactly like that, and if you need to double-check it on Windows, you can enable file name extensions so it is a .pup file. Now the last step we can do here before we update is check the MD5 file checksum just to make sure our firmware has been downloaded, extracted properly, and not corrupted. In order to do this here, I'll have this page also linked down below in the description. You can either drag and drop the file or you can click here to select it. Once you have this open, navigate to your USB drive where you copied the file over to, PS3, update, grab the file, wait for it to hash, and then look for the series of numbers and letters right here. Now within the folder that you've extracted out, there's going to be that md5.txt file. You're going to want to double click that, and what you can do is you can compare right here. Now you can see, I'll close out of this, but if you see here, the case sensitivity does not matter, but we need the numbers and letters to match in the same order. So you could see just with a quick comparison here that the numbers and letters up top on the website match what I have on the bottom here with this text file, which means that our firmware is good, it's not corrupted, and it should be able to install hopefully properly. Once you have that verified, we can close out of here, close out of the MD5 website, and that right there might have been the hardest step in this tutorial, so with that all done, you can right-click, eject your USB drive, and now take it over to the PS3. Back at the PS3, plug in your USB drive, navigate over to any of the columns here, and make sure that your USB drive is showing up, and if it is, navigate over to Settings, scroll all the way up to System Update, within here, go to Update via Storage Media, wait for it to scan, and it should find your firmware right here. Tap the X button, or whatever the Enter button is here, and now it's going to go through the standard update process. It's going to copy over the firmware to your system, and then it's going to reboot. Once it reboots, it's going to go through the process of verifying the update, and then it's of course going to install it. Once you're at this page here, nothing else to do, just let it install and reboot one more time. Now once your PS3 restarts, everything should be in normal working order, However, if you're on the latest firmware, there's not much of a need to run another firmware update here, and that's because, well, we just installed the latest version. But I end up picking the CEX variant on purpose because, for this reason here, you can actually switch between CEX and PEX versions, and I want to do that using this as a demonstration. You can even verify this here. If I come over to my network column, go to Custom Firmware Tools, there is nothing here related to debug or dev or anything of the sort there. So we don't have any ability to really convert this over to a dev system, and we don't have any of those development modules, which is fine because this is the CEX variant. Now if we close out that, you can see that here if I come over to the video column or anything else here such as music, I do not have my USB drive plugged in. But in order to get this to work, let's say in the future you want to install the latest EvoNAT custom firmware right from your XMB, you can go over to the settings, go to system update, make sure your system is plugged into the internet using either ethernet or Wi-Fi. And once it's been connected, go to system update. From here, go to update via internet and check this out. Instead of downloading the latest official firmware, you now have all of these versions available right here. So this here is great because if you want to just update your CEX variant, you can. If there's another one such as NoBD, NoBT, NoBD plus NoBT, you could install that. Or if you want to go to PEX or even vice versa, downgrade back over to CEX, you can do any of those right here. Now for my usage, I'm going to install the latest PEX variant. Find your firmware, you can also choose to save the update data if you want to, I'm not going to do that, but find your firmware, tap the enter button, wait for it here, 
And here we go. We're now going to get this step here, which is of course downloading the update data. Now it might take some time here, so just go ahead and give it a few minutes. I will give a heads up here for anybody at this point saying that this is going to take longer to download it through the system as opposed to downloading it through a PC and transferring it to a USB drive. You're not wrong. This here is the convenient method right here, but if you're wanting to update as quick as possible, you might just want to do the old fashioned method. But if you don't want to find a USB drive and don't want to access your computer, this is still a really awesome option. So here we go, you can see that it's already been downloaded and once it's downloaded your system should reboot and it's going to work through the process of installing a firmware update. This is actually pretty cool, I like the change in colors right here, but you could see I'm ready to install the PEX variant, so I'm going to hit the PlayStation button on my controller to turn it on. It goes through the process of checking for the update data as usual, and the difference here is going to be the user agreement, which I recommend going through here, giving it a read, and once you read and understand it, here, you can go ahead, accept, and now you can tap the enter button right here, and just like before, go ahead and wait. Put your controller down, leave your system alone, wait a few minutes, it's going to do the install, and then it's going to reboot once it's successful. And just like all the other times, once your XMB loads in, your system should be up, running, and working. However, we have now switched or even updated our firmware, and at least in my case, I can verify this by going over to network, custom firmware tools, and if we come over here, check it out, we now have an option we did not have before, which is CEX to DEX tools, meaning that this has been successfully updated to the PEX variant of the firmware, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So again, that's a really nice feature here, not only just for the convenience sake of it, but over the years I've seen so many people accidentally, or sometimes even on purpose, but accidentally, I don't get that one, but there's been people who end up just going through, going to the settings, system update, and they just update the firmware right here, and that is a really easy way to lose your jailbreak. But now, like I said, even if you go to update via internet, well, you don't really have that option for a stock firmware anymore because this is it here. Do keep in mind if you ever want to revert back to a full official firmware, you can do that through safe mode, and I have a video showing how you can uninstall custom firmware on your PS3, but that's not why we're here. We're here to update our custom firmware and get some cooler features, and hopefully protect you all from some accidental updates in the future. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.